Hey there, and welcome back to the third installment from the second element of the technician exam. This is sub-element Charlie. And so we're going to go through these, and I have some visual aids to go along with it. So question one, when do FCC rules not apply to the operation of an amateur station? FCC rules always apply. That is your answer. There is never an exception to FCC rules. Question number two, which of the following are typical duties of a net control station? The correct answer is C, they call the net to order and direct communications between stations checking in. Now locally, we have a friendly net. Sometimes myself or my friend Eddie, KO4 November Lima Lima, KO4 NLL, he will be in the net control. And they will call on you once they've taken check-ins, they've allowed you to put call signs out, and they'll listen for quite some time. Then they'll read back a list of whoever they heard, and then they might check and say, hey, uh, is there anybody else that I didn't get? And then I might chime in and say, W1RCP, uh, you must have missed me, or I doubled with somebody at the beginning, and they won. Uh, they call the net to order, and then they'll eventually say, hey, W1RCP, your turn. Do you have any traffic? Well, we don't do that. We just say, what have you been up to this week? And so we call the net to order, and we direct communications between stations checking in. That is what net control is. Question number two, what technique is used to ensure that voice messages containing unusual words are received correctly? Unusual words, you will spell the words using, it says a standard phonetic alphabet. I believe you should use the standard phonetic alphabet. That's Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, all the way to Zulu. Instead of using names of countries like Argentina uh, and what starts with a B, I can't, Valerius. Okay, so spell it using a phonetic alphabet, the standard phonetic alphabet, if you can. If it is a weird word like bovine spongiform encephalopathy, you, uh, you might have to spell that one out. Okay, so what is races? We're off to the races. It is not a contest. It is an FCC Part 97 amateur radio service for civil defense communications during national emergencies. So if you want to learn about races and participate in it, then you can go to the Internet and you can look that up. Races, amateur radio, and the AWRL may have something about it, or your local club may already have a participation if you're participating in a local club. What does the term traffic refer to in net operation? Now, we're not talking about saying, hey, traffic on I-95 today is backed up 16 miles from mile marker 73. No, it is traffic is messages exchanged by net stations. So that is just messages exchanged back and forth. Uh, if we had a net and we said, hey, guess what? We have a meeting this Saturday at 8.30 a.m. And that is a message exchanged by net stations. That's our traffic for the evening. And you may hear, does anyone have any traffic for the net? That means, do you have a message to relay? All righty, we're on question six, which is an element two, sub element C. It says, what is the Amateur Radio Emergency Service, or ARIES? It is a group of licensed amateurs who have voluntarily registered their qualifications and equipment for communications duty in the public service. And there are some requirements to be part of ARIES. You can check the, uh, again, go to the internet and look up ARIES or ask your club if they already participate in ARIES. Most likely someone, you're in your, someone in your area is familiar with what it takes to be an ARIES member. Which of the following is standard practice when you participate in a net? Well, one, know the purpose of the net. Two, the answer is on this is unless you are reporting an emergency, transmit only when directed by the net control station. Again, you got to listen. 
Which of the following is a characteristic of good traffic handling? Well, this should be a no duh moment here, but you want to pass messages exactly as received. Now at this time, I'm going to show you a sample message. This is from the ARRL. The top part is what one of these forms would look, look like. Now, if you get good enough at this, you could, as this says, you could do the, many of these on a single piece of plain paper. But it shows who the message is for, it shows what the message is, and then, of course, there's signatures, there's a check. This is what it looks like. And so when you type those words or you write those words in those spaces, yes, you're counting how many words you're going to relay. And that is part of another question that we're going to look at in just a minute. But that is what a message would look like. You copy it exactly as you hear it. And if you don't hear it right, you ask that person who's passing that message, please repeat it. You want to have it passed exactly as received. So that's the answer to question number eight. Question number nine, are amateur station control operators ever permitted to operate outside the frequency privileges of their license class? The answer is yes, but with a caveat. Only in situations involving the immediate safety of human life or protection of property. That one, it, it, it's kind of scary to even think like I could operate outside of my technician license. I'm going to go to 40 meters and call for help. Um, if it is a last ditch effort, then that you are, op, you, you are given permission to operate outside of your privileges, but it better be a last ditch effort. There is a story, it didn't happen that long ago, of somebody who was in the desert and they were calling on 10 meters because they were stranded. They, they must have only been a technician and they did not venture outside of their frequency privileges. They were heard and they were found based on um, some, of, some other information that someone had received and they were found within just a couple of hours before dark fell. They were in a bad place. They stuck to where they were. Now, if they didn't get help, from their privileges, then maybe they could have moved down until they found a place to get help. But they checked with their own privileges first. And I'm stressing that. What information is contained in the preamble of a formal traffic message? Now, the preamble, you know what a preamble is, I hope. Preamble is usually what comes before the rest of the message. It's information needed to track the message. So let's go back and look at what the preamble might look like. Up at the top of this form, you see that there's an NR, a PREC, HX, station origin, check, place of origin, time filed, and month and day. Now, it could be message number, um, the PREC. Honestly, I've never done one of these, so I don't know. Um, HXE might stand for something. You can. There's a whole document that's multiple pages for this particular document, but that is what the preamble looks like, and it's information needed to track the message. That's the only answer you can answer here. So what is meant by check in a radiogram header? Now this is important. It's in the it's in the exam. It's the last question too, and then we'll move on to another one, and I'll change shirts for that. But the number of words or word equivalents in the text portion of the message, and we're going to go back one more time to look at this example. You will see that the one, two, three, four, fifth box is a CK, and that is a check. Now, if you go down to the bottom and it says 1RHXEW1AW and then the number 12, that 12 is how many words are in this message. Well, if you count where it says thanks for message space or where the X is, hope to see you at Hamfest X 
73. Well, that right there, if you count it, has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It has 12 words in the text portion, and that number in the check portion is a 12. So that is so that the receiving end knows that that message is correct. So this has been the technician exam, element two, sub element C. So now we're going to move on to element three after this, and that will come out in a few days. Hey, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if this is helping you out, and I'll keep making more. This is W1RCP, Rob73.